My name is Connor, and today we are going to be showing you guys how to code a Minecraft tech client. So this is episode 2 of the series, so if you haven't checked out episode 1, you should definitely go and check that out. Today we are going to be making two mods, Flight and Sprint. But before we do that, we have to do some preparatory work to prepare our client to have modules added to it. So first off, we're going to go into our tutorial.module package and create a new class. This class is going to be called Module Manager. And in this module manager class, we're going to create an array list and it's going to be able to contain the module. So public not void. <laughs> public array list. And it's going to be able to contain modules. And we're going to call it active modules equals new array list. And this is an array list that contains modules. So module. And boom. So now we're going to import the array list and we're all good. Now we're going to make a constructor for the module manager, and we'll just leave it like this. So now that that's done, we can get out of our module manager class and go into our main client class. We're going to make an instance of the module manager, so we'll do public module manager module manager. Now we're going to initialize that instance in the start client method. So on the startup of Minecraft, we'll make a new instance of our module manager. So this dot module manager equals new module manager. Now that that's done, we can save our client class and exit. Now before we start coding any mods, we're going to have to add two essential events to our module class. And those two events are on render and on update. So public void on update actually I might have typed that right <laughs> and public void on render and those are both created we can save the module class and now we're going to hook up those events and call them where they're respectively called so we are going to go to the net.minecraft.client.entity package and find the entity client player mp package or java not pack Open entity client player mp.java. Now scroll down until you find the on update method and do another to do like we did in the last episode. And I'm just going to type this out and I'll explain it all after I've typed it. So for module event module client dot the client dot module manager dot active modules event module dot on update so now I'm going to explain what this does so basically it's cycling through all the modules in the active modules array list and it's calling the on update event on the update of all the entities position slash logic so with that that's all that does and it's going to be the exact same thing with the on render it's going to call the on render event when the world is rendered so we can get out of that package and we are going to go to the net.minecraft.client.renderer package and we're going to find entity renderer now we're going to do control f or control f or command f and rather than that we are going to be doing parenthesis or quotation hand quotation just like that and find and it should bring up this dot mc profile mc dot mc profiler dot end start section hand and right under that we're going to do another to do and do the exact same thing as before for module event module client dot d client dot module manager dot active modules event module dot on render so it's calling the on render event on the render of the world and now that we're out of that we can now go to our main minecraft class under net.minecraft.client and we're going to do a control f and look for get event key and once we find the first insta instance of that we can go out of our find window and we're going to keep scrolling until we find a list of functions that do things right here like you'll see display in game menu refresh ref resources so on so on so on and just go right above this dot display in game menu you to do 
client, and we're going to be doing a similar thing, except this is for a different function. It's rather than being an event that the module is going to be using directly for what the module does, it's more of a thing to act, it's the keybind event. So for module, event module, client dot the client dot active I'm sorry dot module manager dot active modules if keyboard dot get event key equals equals event module dot get bind then event module dot toggle module. So let me explain what this does. It's cycling through all the modules just like before and it's checking to see if the event key, which is the key that is pressed, if it's equal to the module's key bind, then it's going to toggle the module. So now that that's all set up, we're ready to start making mods. So we're gonna make a new package under the tutorial.module or new class and rather than tutorial.module it's going to be tutorial.module.modules. So as you can see that's the new package for all of our modules. Now we're going to go down here, and the name of this class is going to be Sprint. It's going to extend this module, because that's what it is. And we're going to import module, and now you have to hover over the Sprint thing, like click on it, and then keep hovering, and you're going to add the constructor. We can get rid of this auto-generated stub, and we can delete the parameters, because this is an instance of a module. And for module name, obviously we're going to put the name of the module, which is Sprint. And the module bind, we're going to do key keyboard dot key underscore, and then the key that we want. So I'm going to say F for Sprint. You can do whatever you want, though. And the category is going to be category dot player, because that's the category under which this will be sorted. And now we are going to do a public void on update event and first off we're gonna check to see if the module isn't toggled so if the opposite which is the exclamation point if the opposite of this dot get toggled then return so basically what that's saying is if it isn't toggled then just return skip over this method now if obviously if it is toggled then we're going to check two things first if Minecraft dot get Minecraft dot D player dot is collided horizontally. So you see that check? We're gonna surround that check in parentheses and in front of the first parentheses that we made or the second one, in front of the second parentheses after the if, we're gonna put an exclamation point. So basically that's saying if this this thing right here isn't true, so if the player isn't collided horizontally, meaning the player isn't running into a wall, or isn't running into a block. So if the player isn't running into a block, then it'll do what's under this if, and and. Same thing, we're going to do an exclamation point, exclamation point, and then more parentheses, and minecraft dot get minecraft dot the player dot move forward equals equals 0, 0.0 f then we're gonna do what this says so basically what this first like I said if it's if the player isn't running into a wall and if this wasn't here it would be checking to see if the player has no motion forward meaning zero but if it's not moving mean if it's not moving nowhere meaning it's moving then it'll go on so basically I'll say this again it's checking to make sure you're not running into a wall, and it's checking to make sure that you aren't still. Because NCP can catch on to those things. So, with that, obviously, if none of those things are happening, we, we can set sprinting to true. So we do minecraft dot get minecraft dot get minecraft dot the player dot set sprinting to true. And that's all we need for that mod, it's all done. So now we're going to go into our module manager class that we made earlier this episode. And in the constructor we're going to do this.activemodules.add 
add new sprint. And before you import sprint, just go up here and type this. Import tutorial dot module dot modules. And then with this little star, basically that's going to import any class from this package. So we won't have to continually import um, classes as we add them to the array list. So now we're going to make one more class. Obviously, that's flight. And we're going to call it flight. And it's going to extend the module class. And we're going to import module. And just like before, we're going to hover over that and add the constructor, get rid of the auto generated stub, delete the parameters, and fill in the information. So the module name is flight. The module bind is going to be R. And the category is going to be player like the other one. And with that, we can start making our mod. So first, we're just like before, we're going to do public void on update. And we're going to check to see if the mod isn't enabled. And if it isn't enabled, then we're just going to return. So if the opposite of this dot get toggle, then we're just return. So now if it is toggled, we're going to simply minecraft dot get minecraft dot b player dot capabilities dot is flying equals true. So basically if it isn't toggle if it is toggle, then we're setting flying to true, obviously. So now we have to do a public void on disable. And we're going to basically just copy and paste this and change true to false. Now I'm going to explain my logic here. So no matter what, if it is on, we're going to be flying no matter what, even if we land. Because if it wasn't constantly updating and setting flying to true, if you hit the ground, then it would turn flying off even though the mod is still enabled and everything would just get all screwed up. So that's why I don't have this on enable. It has to constantly be, up has to constantly be updated while the mod's on. And the disable, I have that there because when you turn it off, it just has to. It, it, if you set it like this, if you said if this dot is toggled, if it if it is toggled, you set it to true, and if it's not, set it to false. If you did that, then what would happen when you're in creative mode is if the mo this mod is on, you wouldn't be able to fly even when you're in creative mode. So that's why this logic is happening. And if you don't understand, then it doesn't matter. Just do it like this, and everything will be okay. <laughs> so just like before, we're going to add flight. New flight. And we don't have to, okay, I'm a good speller. We don't have to import anything. And boom, we're all good. We can start up the game. And I'm just gonna show you both of these mods and how they work, and then we'll call it an episode. Um the first episode got a lot of views, which I'm happy about. I didn't expect that many views that quick. So thank you guys. Um hopefully this one will get just as much attention and expect lots more episodes coming soon. So as you can see, we're in survival mode, so I'm going to show you the sprint mod. I'm going to turn it on right now. Now I'm going to show you in F5 mode. The, the second I start moving, I'm sprinting, and then if I run into a wall... Whoa, sorry. It's the grass. <laughs> if I run into a wall, I'll stop sprinting. See? Back up. Sprinting. Run into a wall. Stop sprinting. So the mods work. The second I start moving, now I'm turning it off. Now I'm just walking. So now I'll show you fly. Hit R. You're flying no matter what, even if you go to the ground. See, I'm still, I'm still flying, even when I'm, I see I'm going much faster and I'm staying off the ground, so I'm flying no matter what. And then when I turn it off, it just turns off. So, that's about it. Next episode, we're going to be coding a UI with a nice custom font. It's going to be really pretty. We're going to have a side array list, client name in the top corner. So, you guys have something to look forward to. Thank you guys very much for watching. Like this video if you liked it. Comment suggesting mods to do in the future. Give me fonts you want whatever you guys want to comment, and subscribe to me for more content. Um, thank you guys very much for all the support, and we'll see you guys later. Bye.